Hello, hello. We're going to kind of rush into this. Uh, I have hockey to play on the channel at 10, uh, 11 p.m. Um, so we're going to play an hour, then we'll get back to play some hockey on stream, watch, our, watch us get our ass kicked, then get back to this. So let's go meet the players. Hi, players. Hi, Hi Sam. Sam. Hi. Hi, Tree. I know you can't speak to me, so I'm, I'm going to typically talk to you. All game. And wait for verbal responses. Uh, so, Fitz, you have been really kind of going about and getting this organized from at least my perspective. Um, so why don't you tell us what you've been doing? Well, we started off by asking Portis many... No, we didn't ask him a lot of questions. Uh, <laughs> I've been slowly organizing a few of the folks here to, to go and... Uh see why the mines have dried up and uh, see what we can do. So we sent Jacob over to the Jaded Raven to uh, get um, directions and have uh, chartered a boat, getting ready to go. Okay. So Jacob, what exactly are you yes. asking as you're there? I mean, since you were uh, dispatched. One of the th main things that Fitz had asked Jacob to ask about was the direction and location of the island and the mines. But Jacob would also ask about any recent creatures that Portis of might, might have ended up hearing about from the miners, any disturbances in the areas, anything that might have been worth notice, and any particular notes of interest that Portis himself might put forward towards this. Um, because... Okay, so Portis tells you that he doesn't have the direct location of the island, um, but tells you and gives you the name of a ship um, that's in port that knows location. They won't give you any charts about it because obviously, as you know, diamonds are, well, valuable as hell. Especially right now. Um, yeah, so, so they can get you there because they haven't heard anything. It's not that just diamonds aren't coming out. Or they've dried up. It's literally that they don't... They haven't really heard anything. Um, Communications yeah. have cut off, sort of I like mean, with... In terms, of a, in terms of a monsters, um, while, while being an earth gen side, while, while knowing, you know, how to look at diamonds and, and attempt their worth, you ask him about, um, you know... Monsters, and he's like, uh, ones that would kill you? Um, and that's pretty much his response, and he's not, like, taking the piss out of you. He literally doesn't know. Which Jacob can definitely understand, because being a ranger, he's pretty much heard the same kind of thing from a lot of people. Yeah, unfortunately not his area of expertise. Um, so, he, you know, he has that for you, and... Is there anything else that you were acquiring? Uh, Jacob was also wondering if there was anything in particular that Portis wanted him to keep an eye out for at the mines while he was there anyway. Um, I mean, he says diamonds because while the prices are getting higher, which they've actually raised again because someone bought diamonds today, um, there's just not... Uh, he, he, would, he, he can't, like... Ask you to bring things back because it would be considered stealing. Yes. Even though you guys are doing them a service, it's still property of someone. Yes. And with, so if, if he was to have, still... if he was to ask you to steal things for him, you know, like he might not be able to import them even if you do succeed. Which makes sense. Yeah. He'd rather have the good but... contact than anything else. And from then, Jacob would end up thanking Portis for the information, and he would head to seek out the ship to inquire as to how they might be, how him and the rest of the party might be able to get to the island with the mines to be well, yeah, able to assist Portis. Yeah, he basically told you if you, uh, if you, you know, talk to that individual, they, they will get you there. And since everybody else is already heading towards the docks, Jacob will make sure to let them know what Portis said before he ventures to speak to the actual crew of the ship 
about going out to the island with the mines. That way they're not spending money to end up getting a boat and there's already a boat that is capable and willing to bring them without charge. Yeah. I mean, you'll probably realize that you will be paying for a boat. Just, it's the only one that knows where you're going. Yep. Rather pay for one than two. Yep. Especially since Jacob does not have a lot of money right now. So, as you meet up with the party... Uh, you guys are all on the docks right now. Um, it takes you uh, about, I would say, probably no more than 10, 15 minutes to find the captain in the boat, walking through, kind of engaging, asking questions. Again, trying to get you guys in quicker because of the short upfront time we have. Um, but you're not really missing any information. So, always helps. As you, uh, as you guys make your way um, down onto the boat, is there any last minute things that you guys were going to try and do? Uh, before Jacob gets on the boat, he would stop in at the anvil before he ended up fully departing because he had turned over his hand axe yesterday to be fixed and they said there would be a one day turnaround so he'd pick that up and then run to catch up with everybody else. Yeah. And I would wish one to buy arrows. Yep, you could definitely buy arrows. I'm sorry. Yeah, you can definitely get arrows. So. That being said, you guys all board up on... Yep, six. You guys all board onto the, the ship. And uh, you set sail. Uh, nighttime and not really knowing... Any of you really knowing the seas. Literally where you're going, you... Unless someone is trying to attempt it, you're actually not going to know the location. Um, you could roll to see if you can figure it out, but for the long, you know, lack of a better term, um, possibly you won't know where you've gone. Jacob's not naval anyway, so he wouldn't be able to identify, oh, I just have to sail past this and then go past this, unlike being in the forest or mountains or something like it's, that. Oh, look at this rock. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of that, but there's not even many landmarks. Even yeah, based that's on what that, I'm saying. There's, there's a, even as a sailor's uh, aspect, there's not a lot of the landmarks. Yes, Severe, you're on a boat. And I did that there. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure, finalize a couple things on the map. And then I can move you all. Okay, so. Look at star that looks like the last star cluster. Exactly! Fitz, you see all the stars. Because you are a star. Hooray! I'm a star! So, you eventually come up to this uh, large kind of. It looks like a, 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 what you would a, a suspect as a sea rock. Like, you know, it doesn't look like an island itself. Um, except, you know, Jacob, I think you probably have the highest passive next to maybe Mirth. Mm -hmm. um, if anyone else has high passive, let me know. But you'd be the first two to kind of... 21. Xanny, you would also notice, notice this along with the others as, as the four everyone else. At the very distance... You see on this rock that there's a almost wooden kind of wrapping in a large dock, but there's no ships there. There's very little life or light coming from it, other than this, the, the light you're seeing from the stars and moon. Jacob will further amplify his vision using the spyglass of long sight. Uh, a wild blinky appears, and not 20 for each player, as Nasi wishes you good luck. <clears throat> so, as you guys start to pull up to this dock, um, the, the captain and the crew don't get off. I'm like, we got you here. I've never seen it this dead. So it's, it's not normally like this? There's normally people here? 
Uh, he looks and nods, yes. Uh, at least lights, uh, a few ships. Yeah. Quite valuable. You usually have one one ship with the supplies and two guard, guarding ships. Have there been a lot of pirate activity here? Uh, shakes his head, not in the area. I mean, we're far enough away from the closest safe harbor for pirates. Where they would generally get caught by one of the navies or... Okay, and these this dock area, does it actually have housing? Uh, you see a few. You wouldn't consider it, like, massive housing. Um, you, but you do see a few outer buildings. It's not a very big landmass uh, above sea. It's very small. Um, but there's a couple, you know, buildings, but you don't know if they're warehouses or stores or, or of the like. Uh, one kind of sticks out to you that you would think might be a pub, but there's no lights on anywhere. Will you be staying docked until we get back? Uh, based on what I see here, we will pull a, f uh, a bit away, but we'll we'll stay. We'll be able to come get you. We'll, we'll okay. be able to come get you quickly if if need be. Jacob yeah, looks forward. To that was gonna be my question. <laughs> Jacob looks forward towards the captain and Fitz and says if the captain needs to, he can get a short distance away from the docks to be able, just in case of emergency, be able to be separated from it. I can wrap um, some cloth around an arrowhead, light it, and be able to launch that over the water as a signal to say, come on in. Well, we could take a boat. Like, we, we could take a rowboat if they're willing to, to lend it to us. Yeah, they'll leave you with a rowboat if that's what you want. I think it'd probably be safest that way for the six of us to get into a small boat and just make it to the docks. And a lot quieter. Yeah, definitely a lot quieter. Um, and then we're going to have to check out, see what happened to these people before we go towards the mines. Yeah, so basically what you see, uh, at, you're at the end of the dock, the, the farthest one out. With no light, they're, they're not getting any closer, uh, putting themselves at danger. Um, it's about three, 400 feet. Um, to the mine entrance, which you can see, you know, is, a, you know, and there's enough moonlight for this instance that you can see where it, where the mine entrance is. There's a, about five or six buildings on your left, looking like houses to warehouses. You can't be, can't be sure. They're, you know, there's, it's not like you're walking through Penrith and everything. Oh, that's a house. That's a warehouse. They built based on size and space, um, you know, on the ground. It, nothing, nothing's very fancy here. Um, and then you see. Uh, one looks like a tavern, which is to your right, closest to the mine. Um, you see that probably there's more boats that line up there based on the why you think that's the tavern. Uh, and then there's a couple more buildings uh, past the tavern if you were to walk by the mine entrance and go trying to almost hug around the this rock face. Yeah, I'm guessing that about half of us can't see in the dark. <laughs> I can see just fine. But, um... Jacob has dark vision. Uh, Jacob would have dark vision. Mirth would have dark vision. Zulon can spend two key points for it. And Zanny has uh, goggles of the night, so she has dark vision even though she's human. Freya is the only one who cannot see in the dark. Well, I can't. Yeah, if it's I can't see in the dark. I, yeah. <laughs> and Jacob does have torches if Fitz needs a torch. No, I have the light spell. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll let you guys go first. Be, be Frey happy, and I are going to be happy. That, that. Uh, I, uh, I didn't set up dynamic lighting. Yeah. Bless you. Um, be lost in this mine forever. Only on the first square. I can't find anyone. That's what that maze was <laughs> the other day. <laughs> So I'm sorry, were we approaching the, the buildings or the mine? Let's let's find out what happened to these people. If there was a scuffle, if they left in a hurry, uh, if they were attacked. Let's let's just investigate one of the buildings, maybe one of the smaller ones. Let's put you on this map instead of Penrith's map. Oh. Then allow me to walk forward quietly and keep my keep heaven ear out. That's why we brought you! So, uh, as uh, what do you, what's your target, Murph? What is what is Mirth drawn to? Like where is he? There's I've given you a couple different locations that are before the mine. Um, one 
being a tavern, the five buildings on the left, the two kind of around the corner on the right, there's docks. Um, what exactly are you, what's drawn Merce's attention as you're entering? I would expect we would most likely find people in a tavern. Okay. So. So, alright, you're walking a good 300 or so feet. Um, a little bit out in front of everyone else. As they are, well, you know, you don't know what's going on. People are generally moving together. Just, you know, mirth out a little bit for everyone. Um, it's quiet, mirth. Even based on, you know, you know how well you can hear in, you know, Nothing. Nothing at all is really... You, you're not hearing any signs of life um, at all as you as you walk here. The only the only thing is, is the rhythmic crashing of the waves against the island. Um, that is pretty much the only consistent in terms of, you know, quote-unquote white noise um, as you walk up. Uh, taste in the air. S- seawater, I would, I would assume, is about all you're going to pick yep. up. Um, yeah, it mist. tastes fishy. It does taste fishy. But um <laughs> So, um, again, no lights on in any buildings. Um, you kind of make your way. I would say you're a, good, you're a good 25 feet from the front of this tavern. Close enough where you can kind of peer through the, the windows. Um, n- no ambient noise. I mean, you, you've lived in, in the Fearless Wolf. You both lived in the Galgatron. You are used to what the ambience noise of, of life in a tavern is. Um, none of it. It's simply quiet. Can I, even if I get up, like, kind of right I'm up? Just, I just put you there, and then what you want to do is what you want to do. I'm just saying, at this point, I get you there, and now, because there's no map for the town. Okay. So I'm pretty pretty confident there's no one in there at this point i mean if you want to really focus in and roll for it by all means but um, i'm just going off your passive in this case all right so let's see what focus will do on a 27 still nothing I'll turn to the group and I'll kind of like shake my head. How how far back are they? Uh, keeping distance to not make noise. With you, they're within they're fifteen to twenty feet behind you. Okay. Uh, as most parties be. Yeah, you can communicate. They've just been giving you the distance in case you notice something. They have time to stop. Yeah. So I'll cast message and be like, Yeah, I can't hear anything going on here. Do you want me to go inside, take a look, or? Move on to the next building. I looked at Jacob. I'm not an investigator. Jacob is going to extend primeval awareness. Okay. That's within a mile, right? Yep. Okay, let's stop the things again. Uh, aberrations, celestials, dragons, elementals, fays, fiends, and undead. Within one mile, nothing. Well, that's definitely a breath of fresh air. Jacob will move forward towards Mirth to be able to join in the investigation further ahead. Okay. just want to take a moment at the dock um Mm -hmm. i'm trying to figure out if they'd taken the ships or scuttled them or if they if they left in a hurry like if there's barrels um the port itself is in varying stages of what fitz would assume is packing there are still some barrels on the you know on the docks but not very many if you were to go crack one open um, are, are you going to go crack one open? Yeah, sure. Why not? All right. So you walk up to the nearest barrel. Um, kind of just, you know, it's packed for shipping. It takes you a minute. You, you, you do rip off the, uh, the, the lid. Um, immediately there's almost a weird, you know, as, as you, as you taste the air, there's that weird taste, um, slightly moldy food, 
um, or is in this barrel. Oh, I'm just going to kind of put my finger in and pull it out and take a look at it. Uh, yeah, you, there's... You, you grab, like, a, an apple that's probably been sitting there for three weeks. So yeah, it's, 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 it's a moldy it's, apple, it's a moldy so it's been apple. weeks. It's been, it's, it would seem weeks that this food's been here. Yeah, so it's been abandoned for a while. Okay, whatever happened here happened a while ago. What's up, crazy? So, yeah, um, that's... I mean, there's other barrels around if you want to check more, but that's what you get on that barrel. No, no point. <laughs> okay. So, is uh, Mirth and Jacob going into the tavern? Just getting on the, you know, the, the front porch? What are you doing? If there's windows on, if there's windows on the second floor, I could technically climb up and peek in there. If you'd like. I... If no one's in disagreement, I would like to quietly do so. Okay. What all do I need? And we'll uh, give him guidance before he scuttles off. Okay. I need a stealth and acrobatics yeah. and a perception. Look at that. You get yeah. four. Just tell me when you want to use your guidance. So stealth. Uh. Uh, that's 20 because we're reliable. Okay. So, I'll go ahead and use it there. Our perception is 29. 29. All right. He kind of you know kicks a few ways up, uh, grabbing onto a ledge, pulling himself up, pushing up, uh, making his way quietly to this window. Um, you look in; it's dark. You know, you kind of you immediately kind of going from the the small moonlight, trying to adjust your vision um, through. Um, you look through; it's almost distorted. Uh, whatever's inside. It seems like there is a... From what you can best make out on a 29. Um, you see, it looks like a bed that's made. Um, there is a, a single, like, dresser. Everything, all the drawers are closed. The door is um, ajar. They, it opens into the room, and that is all you see. Wait, you said distorted? Yeah, your vision is distorted. With For dark what? vision, you can't figure it out. Can I make an arcana check? Sure. Ooh, damn. It's not magic. Okay, fair enough. You can make me investigation. Okay. How's your max, I guess. So at 18, 18 um, some of it is definitely the type of window, and the rest of it's dirt, dust, other stuff that's on. Remember, in dark vision, you see black and white. Trying to pick out stuff in that kind of aspect is going to be harder um, without light. Yeah, you know, if you picked up the light, you could have seen that you know, the windows were dirty. Um, but you, you couldn't really tell. Just between the window and the, the dust and everything, it just kind of distorted what was inside. It was hard to see. However, you saw everything right. since you rolled a 29 perception. <laughs> All right, so. Oh. But you, you said the bed was made, the door was closed. There was no signs of, like, The door was ajar. Distress. So the door was open. Yeah. The dresser drawers were all closed, and the bed was made. So, but it doesn't look like someone was like just dis and was distressed and just like ran out. At least in the, at this window, there doesn't seem to be that. C can I move to a different window? There's one other window you could look. Okay. Yeah. Do I need? I I just or? no. I I'll keep your stealth as where it is. You're already on the second floor, so it's fine. Um, mm -hmm. Roll me another perception. 22, but with that reliable. Yeah. Uh, again, this this one, you don't know if it's you know second time just looking in, you're trying to overcompensate for the glass, or it's more dirt in this room. 
you're not quite sure. You definitely see a bed. It seemingly is made. Um, the, another dresser. All the drawers are closed. The door is more ajar, facing inward. And there's something on the bedpost, but you can't make it out. At this point, I'll climb back down and I'll report everything. Yeah, just give me the stealth as you're going to land. Okay. The potential to make a loud noise is there. Yeah. Uh, you have a cloak of kind, 30. No, I don't. Oh, you don't? Oh, yeah, you don't anymore. I forgot about that. So, yeah, 25? Yeah. Yes. Pretty quiet. You know, there's that little bit of... That you hear and you're like... Because it's not up to your standard. But, uh... <laughs> You know, <laughs> you hear it based between passive and you're not up to your normal standard. Um, but for the most part, no one else really hears you land. They see you because you are you have no cover to your own party, but... Yeah. Beds are made, doors, clo doors closed. The doors, the doors are ajar, but... There's something in there that I couldn't really tell. That was the tavern you went to? Yes. yes. You didn't see or hear anything at all? Nothing. Okay, I think it's pretty safe for us to start moving forward then. I, uh, I cast light so Safre and I can see, and anybody else who doesn't have dark vision, we slowly start creeping towards this. And yeah, you know, based on what that was happening, Fitz looking for, you know, looking at the water through the moonlight. And now getting a second look on it with your light, you don't... S I mean, the water's deep, so you can't be sure, but it, you don't see any signs of anyone scuttling ships. Yeah, there, there would be bits and things floating around if you scuttle a ship, in, in the very least. So, yeah, they must have taken off. Or maybe it was a ghost ship time. Ghosts. So, uh, what you re what you guys make your way into the mine? Um, almost immediately, you realize that the floor is slanted downwards. Um, yeah, it's not not like trap slanted downwards. It's the you know at the start they're already starting to dig down. Um, from from moment one, they began with a conscious um, so almost you similar to the spiral staircase as they're building this pathway down. Um, until you come to it, it, you guys probably travel for good feet wise you're not sure but you probably traveled for uh, yeah okay get you um, probably a good 25 to 30 minutes before the floor evens out and you kind of see um, a built in stone archway into the existing stone and there are two large Heavy wooden doors. Okay. First thing is search perception to make sure there's a thing behind the doors or nothing like that. Okay. Give me perception. 26. Uh, 26. Uh, the only thing you hear is sounds like dripping water. Well, here's dripping water. Best get the door. Make sure it's probably not trapped, but you know. Ugh, Eighteen. Door seems legit. Not locked or anything. Uh, it's definitely locked. Okay. But it's definitely. Uh... All right. If everyone else is ready, I will proceed to unlock and open. This will be the answer then. 28. 28, you, you kind of start working on the lock. Uh, different than you're used to. Um, in many cases. You uh, oh. you think you have it, and your tool slips. Resetting it. It is still currently locked. I give it a, a I beg your pardon, but... <laughs> Okay, Sephiroth comes up and, and blesses your next attempt. 
My, the tip of my ears are slightly red. <laughs> hey, my guy is just sitting there. Again, you get to almost the same spot. You're like, you go to focus. You're like, okay, I know where I messed up last time. And as you slide, you feel it. And you're like, son of a bitch. Like, <laughs> this is... You have to pull your tools out. Because we start knowing the complexity of the lock. And uh, you... Uh, did you look to Safri for another guidance? She will give it. <laughs> oh, balls. 33? There. There you go. <laughs> so, Mirth kind of a little bit flustered at this point, I would say. I, just, I, don't, yeah. think, I don't think he's failed. This might be his first time failing a trap check, uh, a pick, a picking lock check, isn't it? Yes, really, yeah. yeah. He gets in there. Besides when he's trying to help rise with that box. Yeah, he gets in. Starts moving around. That's because it wasn't a thieves tool check. Um, yeah. And <laughs> he moves through. And you hear... Tink! And you're like... Okay. Alright, I got the lock open. You pull your tools out. You know, there's that... Okay, you know what? That was a good lock, but I... I got it. You know? There's that self... A little bit of pride there. Alright, that, that's the toughest lock I've ever done, but I got it. Right? Not being beat down by the lock. So. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of, I look over my shoulder, give him the, the thumbs up. And I will slide of hand it open. All right, give me a slide of hand check. Yeah. 20. <laughs> Doosh. Door doesn't open. But you made a little bit of noise. Trying to push it open. A pulling. Even, you want to pull it? Give me a slight hand check. Try to do it quietly. It is relatively heavy, yes. Uh, you try to pull it, you feel it not pull. It definitely pushes in. Do I get the sense that I'm just, it's just, I have to force it? You, no give, me, give, me a, give me an investigation, I'll say. Give me another investigation. Because you missed it on your first one. Uh, 18. Can I guidance this? I You're not going to need to, because it wasn't a okay, very high DC. that's cool. But yeah, you would have been able to otherwise. Um, Mirth, it's a pair of big double heavy doors, and it's a diamond mine. It's probably barred from the other side. Oh, of course. <laughs> they probably barred it from the other side. Ah. <sighs> Can you this, slide something okay. in between there and lift the bar? There's, there's a little bit. Yeah, it's going to be... You're going to have to... What are you guys going to slide? Well, We're going to so slide Mirth. No. <laughs> He's a little too heavy. I'm hey, sorry. I could use I'm, Kiki I'm not that to problem. prop the door open. Would Kiki fit? Just to, just to hold the door open, just to give us that enough time to kind of fool around with what's on the other side, barring the door? Um... It didn't even open enough to try and really get to the, that lock because of the way the door bars. You can you could push on both ends to be able to get one person to, to try and push or pull something with it to, to knock the bar off. Um, Kiki is not going to do anything extra because you have two party members. Like, the door is heavy, but it's not a strength check just to, to lean on it enough to push it in slightly. So we all got to give it the heave ho, is what you're saying. You can you can all try and break it, break the bar, or you can two of you can like lean on it, and someone attempt to make like a strength check, and tell me how which tool and how you're doing it. All right, line up. Just Who's to, got strength? Just be sure. Um, <laughs> kind of do. Just be, Jacob has a be, sixteen. Just one in strength. I have a fourteen. Just to be certain, this is the only door, right? The only door that you found, yes. Okay. So, I'm not... We got the goalies. My nine. Or, yeah, nine. Um, I have a rapier. So it's Jacob or Freya? It seem like. The 16 and the 14. She, yeah. Freya is also a 14, so Jacob would probably be better. All right, Jacob. I'll say for the... Because of strength... Fitz takes, puts his shoulder into one door, Freya into the other. They get you a little bit. You can, you have like six inches 
um, of room between the two doors as they push them. That you can you can see the large, heavy, um, what looks to be almost like a tree trunk, um, in kind of like makeup um, bar that is currently barring this door shut. Alrighty, uh, let's see. Jacob is going to try to use the flat back end of the hand axe of returning, and okay. he is going to use athletics to try to wedge it in and lift to try to roll the wood away from the so door. You're trying to to actually put the the sharp end in and pull it up, or from inside the opening of the door? Yeah. Yes. So you're, okay, so give me give me an attack roll. See how well you lodge it in there. Alrighty, hand X returning. Nope. It takes you a couple before you kind of feel that you, you have a chance to pull it. Give me an athletics check. Can I guidance this, or am I too concentrated you're, on the you're door? Too concentrated on the door to get in the door. Yep. No worries. A seventeen pulling. It's 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 hard. Um, it takes you more than one attempt. The axe kind of. Uh, slipping out of your hands a few times or out of the wood a few times and before you finally get it up you you feel it on that, that edge the teetering edge and you finally get it over and you, you have to almost immediately let go of the hand axe so that you're not pulled to the ground by the way to this this bar okay but you have the doors you know it kind of rolls a little bit enough they open enough to where he was able to push it out that you guys can kind of squeeze through and get in In order to put this bar in, someone has to be in there. Like, it's the yeah, only explanation. Like, they close themselves in as a fortification. Quite possibly, yeah. Especially but, against raiding and stuff like that. I mean, looking through and just... Well, Jacob I'll speaking it, general, a soldier yeah. background. I'll call it general knowledge um, on most of this. Uh, Jacob's probably bringing up a good amount. Uh... Kaelin, Himmelgard's a dwarven settlement, correct? Uh, Harmon Guild, yes. Yeah, Harmon Guild. Um, they would have similar sort of fortifications. Uh, this is nothing you more than seen likely, before. Yeah. Uh, but more likely stone doors, uh, being a whole city. Um, you'd probably yes. see stone, especially dwarves. Um, very similar. You also realize that as you're standing back looking at this, there's really really no way to get like a battering ram down here even even a smaller one which would take ages to get through these heavy doors um like you know the, the portable hand ones that they have in D, &D uh, that would yeah, probably yeah. take hours upon hours um just to hopefully put a crack in all this um not even get through just to put a crack in it so you know jacob steps out uh you guys have light on you. So immediately, yep. Fitz and Frey, you don't see anything. And the, the, everyone else has dark vision to 60, correct? No one has any further? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, you see, as you're kind of standing in this opening, Fitz and Frey, you see um, what seems to be a small fountain uh, just just on the edge of your dim light uh, in front of you. The rest of you, just being able to see just that little bit extra on the outsides, you see almost buildings on different rows um, down here. Is this is kind of reminiscent of um, like uh, how they used to do the housing and stuff like that in the Dwarven settlements in, in Harmon Guild? It's, it's reminiscent, but it's definitely not Dwarven make. Reminiscent as in, you know, you would have a, a smaller entrance, a sp and then some trading posts up top. Um, if, if it's a subterranean city, I don't think we've ever had that discussion um, or the lore written. But just in general dwarven knowledge, because you would have that. Um, most dwarven settlements, places like Thor Lador, um, very small up top. You're walking on, on land. Um, the, you see, you would see the gates. You know it's a, a dwarven settlement. And then there's a few outside the gates, kind of buildings, trading shops, stuff like that. Um, but not a lot of meat and bones until you get down underneath the mountain, really, uh, before there's that sort of community-esque feel. Um, but the craftsmanship, the buildings, and the area, 
There's some Dwarven influence, but not really Dwarves, um, per se. Okay, she kind of makes note of that to uh, to the rest of the party. It's Dwarven influenced, but it's not Dwarf per se. Like a miner's shanty town? Yeah, because like old, but a little bit better than a shanty town. Um, the make is more permanent. Um, outside of what you know, if you guys, as you guys start to, exp- I would say, explore, getting just even just so that all of you can kind of look at the closest building. Um, the the quality is for long term. Seem maintained. Um, outside of again that kind of because of the light. There's dirt, there's just uncleanliness that accrues over time. Okay, and obviously there's no torches or light coming There's no from light it. anywhere. You are the only source of light right now. Oh, aren't I special? So if like we look around... <laughs> you are very special. You are our special target. Um, so is, is it basically like it was upstairs? Like, look, does very, it really look... I mean, very similar, but there's a little... These buildings are a better quality. Well, no, I mean um, like similar in that it doesn't look like look, people were dragged out of their homes. Uh, give me some uh, investigations and survivals. Uh, investigation. I will guidance. Twenty. Get twenty-two on Earth. Anyone doing survival? Yeah, Jacob can. Okay, I will also do guidance on Jacob. Okay, 24 to Um, yeah, it doesn't. You don't see any signs of struggle, Mirth. Um, mm-hmm. being outside looking around. Uh, feet is a Jacob. Like, there's what you would expect from older tracks. You kind of see, you know, a random track here and there. Um, the only thing that it, that comes to note to Jacob, you do see some odd kind of like drag marks in places, but you don't know if it's, you know, it doesn't necessarily scream out someone was dragged away. It could have been a crate or a cart that was over overloaded, you know, something along those lines. Um, that's the only thing you of note that you see, and it's very brief. Jacob's going to point that out to the rest of the party. Let them know about what he's saying. What was it again? A small, like, drag mark. Okay. Is it going deeper into the mine or out? It's it's between these two buildings, like, a, not not a full street, but it's more like an alleyway. And it seems to be, based on his survival, dragged from the alleyway towards the center. And then it, you don't see anything where you are in this, in, you know, kind of in this central plaza style um, area. Should we follow the tracks in reverse? Lectures that alley? You didn't sense anything down here, right, Jacob? Like, uh, are we a mile underground? No. Or... Okay, so you're, I'm you're at guess. best. The ghost town. Like three quarters of a mile underground, at most. No light. This is a ghost town. I'm I'm guessing whatever happened here again happened here a while ago, uh, and it's been abandoned. So let's just let's just fan out just a little bit, and uh, let's walk down the street and see if we can hear anything echoing. Yeah. All right. So you guys kind of go. You put you you put Frey and Fritz in the middle because they need to beat each other, and then uh, if there was something. It's the longest distance for them to see the light. You know, spreading out the rest of the party with dark vision on either side, walking down the central plaza. Um, you're walking. You're gonna. You're walking to look for either a further way down or or something that, that draws your attention. Is that the general uh, mission of this walk? Yeah. For, for me, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you start from the doors, making your way down to the city. Um, you see for quite a while, those of you especially with dark vision would catch this first for quite a while, 10, 15 20 minutes go by as you're walking down this you know, central plaza, passing by fountains uh, 
stalls that have nothing on them that you know look like they're ready for business if they were just cleaned up um, for quite a while you're walking down um, before finally those of you dark vision see it first you see another similar um, door that is barred from this side um, which seems to be the way down uh, you know uh, who speaks Dwarven? I do. Anyone else? Nope. Negatory. Okay. So, Freya, eventually when you get into sight, they would see writing first. Um, on, you know, they'd see it up there, but they don't, like, can't identify it. Once Fitz gets the light within it, you know, it just, it do, just says, it just says mine. It basically it just says mine. Um, uh, you get that if you were to have looked inside the other door, but it said port. Um, basically, it's a directional sign over the over the roof. Ah, okay. Would, she will explain that to the group you, then. You would you would theorize, based on this now, that any of the other exits, and there probably are. You haven't gone sideways. You've just gone, you know, from A to B without checking any of the other sides for other doors. Um, you would expect that they probably are all labeled. Uh, especially if, like, if you were coming down here and afraid you were coming to visit, right? Say, you know, a dwarf you knew came here and was working. It could be really confusing down here, especially if you're not from here. So they, they had labeled them for anyone that was coming to visit. Okay, she will pass that on to the rest of the uh, the party. And go at the very least it gives us a sort of a directional travel and there are probably more exits around here somewhere but knowing the dwarves if I, as i do they've probably hidden them fairly well um but i think mirth and jacob would be able to find them yes dwarven, yes, labels, dwarven for labels for noobs the small bit of dwarven hospitality that is not ale So, so, but we're looking, or we're focusing on this door for now, right? The mines. Yeah, uh, we have no idea what happened here. It doesn't look like there is a fight. There's no signs of blood or gore. Um, it looks like people up and either left or disappeared. Jacob points out the fact that it's kind of concerning that the door leading out had the bar on the inside and the one going into the mines was also barred from this side. Like they were trying to keep outsiders from coming in from either direction, the mines or the mainland. Almost like a disease. Close like yourself a... off. It's like they're trying to keep something out or in. Why do you have to say disease? All right, now I'm paranoid. Well, it's not. At least it's not a curse. Yes. Is it? I've dun, dun, both. Dun. You know, they're fun. Hey, I already dealt with curse once. I don't want to deal with it again. Uh, I have a question. Sure. How high is the ceiling? Uh, the ceiling of this place? Um, it's probably it's out of your vision. Um, I look at Mirth. How high is the ceiling? <laughs> Mirth, you can see points where there's a stalactites hang, right? Stalagmites from the ground? Yeah. Stalactites. You can see points of them, you can't really see the full ceiling. But you, you can see probably like, over the door, it's probably 50 feet, but then it's domed. So it, you, would, you would theorize it's probably maybe 70 feet in the center. That's why you can't see it all the time. about 70 feet max okay good I just wanted to make sure if something happens in here what spells can be used thank you Mirth don't worry it's it's large enough to fit an ancient dragon oh that's so inviting <laughs> thank you <Steph. laughs> you say that like it's supposed to make us comfortable it depends on the ancient dragon I suppose alright if we're going if we are going to go towards the mines someone's going to have to unbar it all right, let's. Uh, it's easier on this side, that's for sure. So, it is. Uh, Jacob, give me a hand, please. 
Do you, do you both want to give me an investigation check well, first? Actually, yeah, that's well, sure. actually, I was going to ask if I could make a perception check first, make sure there's nothing moving around on the other side. Okay, those, yeah, perception, you don't hear anything. Uh, give okay. me a investigation. No, I would rather you roll investigation. Go for you. 18? Because 18's just not enough. Uh, Zanny, you want to roll a uh, investigation as well? There you go. As, as Fitz and Jacob go to, like, get ready to lift, the Zanny kind of, like, raises her hand and, and points to, um... It almost looks like an oversized, um, torch sconce, where, like, a, it, where it's got that big round, um, metal area. Uh, she walks over to it, and in about, like, in a good about 10, 15 seconds of time, she goes, she just pulls something, and you watch this thing attaches to this large beam, and then it just starts rotating upwards, unbarring the door. Are you sure you're not a dwarf? <laughs> well, that makes simple as things. Is the door locked? Uh, on an 18, you know it is. It is indeed locked. <sighs> you might want to guide him some. Go, Murph! With the there guidance, with the guidance, Mirth, uh, you didn't have to not 20. So on a 35, it takes him a good 15, 20 seconds, but he pops the lock, meeting the DC. Jesus freaking, Jesus freaking Christ. Yeah. I mean, you could have found the key. That's another way to do it too, but... <laughs> Screw it. <laughs> keys. Who needs them? Who needs keys if you got rogues here, you know? You know, if I if I ever meet the guy who makes you store, I'm going to have to shake his hand. Or oh, hers. Oh, trust me. Listen, you, have you seen the locks that they, they throw against me when I play a rogue? Huggles had DC 40 locks, okay? <laughs> I don't want to hear it. So, uh, yeah, you, you, you pop it out, and... Uh, you kind of sweat a little bit at first, but you get into that last pin, you're like, uh, and then you hear, go, Mirth! And you, you go look at your shoulder, and you, you just instinctively pull up, and it was at the right time, and the, the lock opens. Excellent. Side of hand? Open you're hand. welcome. Yep. Thumbs up, side of hand. 20. Yeah, I mean, you make a bit of noise, because they are heavy. Um, they kind of creak a little bit as they... Again, they haven't been opened in a while, so there's that little bit of creaking. Um, but you see kind of another pathway down. Shall we? Can you check this uh, walkway for recent uh, movement there, Mirth, before we start? It'll be a survival check, Mirth. Yeah. Uh, anyone here or to... Jacob, can you look? <laughs> Doesn't seem like any recent movement, Jacob. Jacob slowly shakes his head to everybody else. It doesn't appear that there was a great deal of recent movement. Still, uh, we're still going in the assumption that it's a while now. Okay. Yeah. So can I just proceed with an investigation for traps? Just in case? yeah, Roman investigation. Twenty-five. Uh, you don't notice any traps, however. You notice there's there's torches on the wall, like, not lit, but, um, ones that obviously burned out a while ago, um, probably because all of their workers probably weren't, you know, didn't have dark vision, um, yeah. so the, the, the mines themselves would probably be lit, but they are not, they'd be either burned out or were snuffed out, yeah. without, you know, further inspecting them, you wouldn't be able to tell. Uh, to heck with it. I'll further inspect. Okay, give me another investigation. Is he too far ahead for me to do guidance? 
Uh, he is not. You guys are all generally together at this point. Okay, I will give him guidance. On a 24, um, these ones here seem to have burned out on their own. Okay. These are just like they were left? Time. They were left and eventually burned out of whatever was fueling them. Yes. They look to be either oil, oil like an oil-based um, ignition system. So not like a, a, just a uh, like a torch you would carry, but something more permanent, heavy, that could burn for a time. Um, you could give me a history on it if you wanted to figure out how long they might burn for. I can do that wonderfully. Twenty-six. Yeah, no, twenty-six. That's good. Yeah, I would. I would figure that at this point when you're out of combat. You're probably recasting light every 10 minutes, just being a seasoned adventurer. Knowing that, oh, if you wait the last minute and then you get in combat, that could cost you your life. So. But I thank you for actually remembering to do it. Um, yeah, uh, these probably burned for better than a day. If they were fully, if they were completely filled, they'd probably burn for a full day without needing, um, and, you know, to be refilled or touched. Um. They probably burn for a little longer than you'd expect, but you would gauge if you were the one doing this, Mirth, um, you would probably fill them once a day about the same time. But if you were an hour or two late, um, they probably wouldn't go out. So, Is there any way I can check to see, like, okay, th these are how long they usually burn for, so, and they've been out for this long, so I can estimate how long, like... Um... You know what I'm trying to say? You can give me an intelligence check. Understand, only you can roll. It can't be guidanced. Okay. And the DC is relatively impressive. <laughs> no. Had it been the other way around, I would tell you exactly. But, no. They're cold, they're cold, so you figure they've been out probably at least a day. All right. So, do you continue down? It's time to press on quietly. Right. Hold on. I'd actually, can I do like a generalized sort of, uh, or somebody with a better perception than I, um, could maybe have a listen, see if we can't hear anything aside from the wind through the mines. Okay. Sure. Doesn't seem to be yeah. any noise at all, uh, from what you'd be able to hear from where you are. Um, so, you guys continue down uh, for another about 20 minutes. Um, as you reach, you you kind of see tracks on the ground, like not human tracks, but minecart tracks. Um, they look heavier duty than normal. Um, you kind of step through the archway as some of you kind of get your first glimpse of the mine. And that's where we're going to pause it because hockey in nine minutes and I have to go turn the Xbox on. So, they'll have about a half hour to play in and freak themselves out in their own head and then we'll be back here after hockey but hockey will be live shortly. So, bye Twitch. Bye, bye Twitch. Bye, Twitch.